Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering module number 2 that is Vapor Power Systems part 3. So, in this lecture we are going to focus on the important component of a steam power systems that is steam generator and mainly we will talk about fossil fuel type steam generator for which the energy is supplied through fossil fuel. Now, when this energy is supplied to the fuel, uh, the water receives heat from the fuel and that happens in a component what we call as a water tube boilers. Many a times we also talk about uh, like modern steam power systems call it as a steam drum. So, we will try to focus on these two uh, main important segments. Then we will also discuss about the how water is circulated in the boilers which means that in a steam generator continuously we are supplying water at the same time we are generating superheated steam. Sometimes the water is at saturated state, sometimes the water is also in the superheated state. So, to analyze this we need to see that how water circulation takes place. So, mainly because one is uh, uh, at uh, gas phase, other is in the liquid phase. So, the density difference that occurs between gas phase and liquid phase uh, has an advantage that uh, makes us uh, the circulation of water in the boiler. Another category of water uh, boiler is the once through boiler, which means that uh, uh, when you supply heat to the water, uh, the traditional way of going to superheated steam is through the liquid to gas phase and through latent heat of heat addition and subsequently we go to the superheated state. So, basically we uh, deal with the property diagram of pure substance for water uh, uh, that considers the dome. Now, in a once through boiler what happens? If you want to bypass the saturation regions then liquid phase can be converted to gas phase. In other words, we can take water to steam directly and such a pro uh, boiler is known as once through boiler. That means, without going through the latent heat phase, we can go from water to gas phase directly. So, this is the overall discussion as of today. So, uh, if you look at uh, the our uh, previous analysis, when you dealt with a what a steam power system look like, basically it has main three segments M, N, O and P. M stands for the supply of energy to the working fluid. So, we our working fluid is water and the supply of energy uh, we can have it through fossil fuel, nuclear, solar, geothermal. So, many is resources of energy we can use it. So, our main focal point of the few lectures from now will be on steam generators and mainly we will be talking about the part M part and uh, uh, in, in our previous lectures we covered turbines, we also covered condensers and subsequently in uh, other phases also we will cover the cooling towers. And uh, additionally if you look specifically for the Rankine cycles, uh, the heat addition phase starts from point 0.4 and ends with the uh, 1.1 dash. So, from 4 to A may be uh, heat addition phase starts from 4, 4 to A is in the liquid phase. So, it is a constant pressure line. So, at constant pressure we keep on adding heat till we get the saturation point. Then from A to 1 is the latent heat of um, heat addition that means liquid of water gets to saturated vapor and from 1 to 1 dash it is the superheated region. So, that is uh, the superheated steam. So, essentially speaking from 4 to 1 dash entire thing heat addition takes place into uh, as Q in. So, that is all about the boiler dodge, but this heat addition phase uh, in, uh, in reality happens uh, from liquid state to superheated state. So, this is essentially integral of various components and all these components are part of this domain that is steam generator. So, whatever I have explained so far, uh, if you can recall them, they are like this. 
So, in power uh, stations uh, that operates mainly fossil fuel and nuclear fuel, the steam generators is the integral part because their main aim is to produce the steam at a desired rate by burning the fuel in its furnace. And steam generator represent greater source of energy for the power plants and they invariably use Rankine cycle. Now, uh, for most of the modern power plants uh, when they are used as a steam generator, they operate close to a 240 bar which is mainly for superheated steam and 70 bar for saturated steam. And if you look at the uh, wide range of operations that is from liquid to superheated regions. So, steam generator involves the complex combinations of the components and they are mainly heat exchangers. They are known as economizer, boiler, superheater, reheater and air preheater. So, uh, we will try to see how they are organized in a particular steam generator unit. Apart from this, there are uh, auxiliary units like uh, pulverizers, uh, then burners, then fans, and then we have ash handling equipment and so on. Uh, now onwards, uh, another important significance difference that we have been using is the boiler. So, essentially boiler is the word that is used in the Rankine cycle when you are handling saturated steam. That means, when we just we are going from point A to 1, uh, whatever uh, heat that gets added that is latent heat of water, latent heat of vaporization for the water. So, when this heat is added and that part of the steam generator component may is regarded as a boiler. But a more precise or wide range of op operations, we use the word called as steam drum. So, we look at the steam drum in very closely in the subsequent slides. So, let us talk about uh, the steam generator that are used uh, in the modern uh, steam power systems. So, if you look at I mentioned that uh, the steam drum is the most generic word. So, if you, see, if you look at the stream drum, it is like a cylindrical structure of um, certain diameter and length uh, and this steam generator has lot of uh, tubes. So, they are called as a um, riser or downcomer. So, the word downcomer actually the stream drum collects the water, I mean it is a kind of a water reservoir for the plant. So, when, uh, in, uh, when this water gets stored in the drum, then what happens is that uh, the buoyancy is taken as advantage that means water gets circulated or comes down through a uh, through some pipes which we call as a downcomer and uh, when it comes it uh, interacts with a header which which uh, connects this water with respect to fuel air systems so basically heat is added um, through this process so, when this heat had a steam is gets generated and this steam passes through some through the another set of water tubes and we call them as a risers. So, there may be a um, number of down uh, downcomers and number of tubes which are used for risers. So, why you say riser because steam uh, when it density comes down it goes up and finally, when the steam is again stored here in the steam drum and then for subsequent transmission to next unit. So, basically the steam drum supplies saturated steam. Now, to get superheated steam, we have superheaters which are uh, another unit of uh, entire water steam generating systems. We have uh, superheaters and some cases we want the steam to be reheated. Uh, I mean rehe reheating of the steam that means after it comes from the uh, uh, high pressure turbine, it again passes through the low pressure turbine. So, some reheating segment uh, we used to do. So, there is a reheater and apart from these are the major two units that is operated when we are uh, covering in the beyond the saturated dome. Now, some of the units like, uh, like economizer, economizer is another unit uh, which is actually a, a the word economizer essentially specifies that economically how you are using the energy which is uh, used as, which is nothing but a exhaust and how you are going to use them uh, for uh, initial preheating purposes. 
So, economizer does some of this initial preheating stuffs. Again, we also require uh, uh, the um, air to be preheated. So, that preheating concept also integrated with a uh, what we call as air preheaters. So, basically, whatever wherever heat addition or heat um, heating is required for different parts of the power plants, that essentially is integrated with this steam generator. And ultimately, entire energy that comes from the fuel air combustion, and here the fuel is mainly fossil fuel. So, this is about the overall uh, concept of this steam generator, which is replicated in this diagram. So, uh, now coming back to the classifications, there are uh, three main segments of classifications. One is the utility steam generator, second category is industrial steam generator and third one is marine steam generator. Out of these three, uh, if you look at marine steam generator, they are mainly used for, uh, um, for giving uh, necessary powers for ships for marine applications and that mainly use the fuel oil as a main source of heat. But again that is localized with respect to marine systems. Other is industrial steam generator, normally it is also a kind of a power plant systems which is integrated with various auxiliary units like waste heat systems uh, which is again can be integrated with some gas turbine systems. So, uh, they are like uh, intermediate units that operates relatively low pressure at low pressures. But one important thing is that utility steam generator, this utility steam generator mainly used for thermal power systems and they use uh, two types of uh, units, one is subcritical unit, other is supercritical unit. Now, while talking about subcritical unit, we use a water tube drum type steam generator which I have explained earlier. So, in the subcritical unit what happens uh, if you look at this particular figure that means we are operating the steam that means from point 6 to uh, 1 if you want to go there are two path paths one is we have to cross this dome and go up that means initially uh, liquid water gets heat that means from liquids to saturated liquid then saturated liquid to saturated vapor, then saturated vapor to again superheated regions. So, essentially we are crossing this uh, to reach point 1, our main path is covering this dome. That is what we call as subcritical unit or which uses water tube drum type generator. Now, other type of generator suppose you want to bypass this dome, then from 6 to 1 we can reach through directly without entering into the dome. So, that is possible if you operate your uh, boiler uh, at a pressure which is much above this critical point. So, this part in this dome that is a one peak point which is called as a critical point for water and this uh, that means one, one should operate at the critical point operate the boiler or generator at a pressure which is above this critical point. And that is uh, what we call as a supercritical boiler uh, or uh, generator and we call this as a once through boiler. Now, when talking about supercritical unit boiler, they operate at about uh, 240 bar just higher than the critical pressures. When the subcritical units, they operate either at 130 or 180 in the range of 130 to 180 bar and for which the maximum temperature falls in the range of 550 to 600 degree centigrade. Now, while operating these uh, units, we try to uh, uh, get the power in the range of 125 to 1300 megawatt and that uh, for which the steam consumption is about 125 to 1250 kg per second. And for all these things, we are using the energy from the coal to produce this power. So, these are the rough numbers uh, that typically a steam generator that operates. Now, we will move on to component wise uh, these things and uh, regarding industrial steam generator I have already mentioned they operate with various segments of energy resources either from coal, oil, natural gas, municipal waste, process waste, byproducts. 
so it's a combination of the all of them so that is the reason they call that as a industrial steam generator so they have flexibility of operating with multiple energy resources uh, but they since they have to uh, operate with multiple energy resources so pressure range is relatively less and typically uh, around 100 to 105 bar with a steam capacity of 125 kg per second uh, the uh, last category which is a low unit so that is marine steam generators they use uh, main resources as uh, oil energy resources as oil and the superheated steam they produce at around 65 60 to 65 bar at press at temperature of 540 degree centigrade so these are the overall summary that uh, what the steam generators are normally operate now we'll move on to mainly the fossil fuel type generators and they are uh, essentially divided into uh, the following components like we call it them as a fire tube boiler water tube boiler natural circulation boiler controlled circulation boiler once through boiler subcritical and supercritical type boiler so essentially the two broad ones are there one is water tube type other is one through type and out of these two the natural circulation with that all these two these two either they can be natural circulations or they can be controlled way of circulation they can be also subcritical uh, but uh, once through boiler has to be supercritical but uh, the fire tube boiler is a very old concept initially when the concept of steam addition process starts they started with the fire, fire tube boiler so this is the overall summary now we will start uh, one by one uh, just to give some introduction about the uh, type of fossil fuel generator and first category is the fire tube boilers so this concept was uh, started from 18th century so here the concept was that uh, we will have uh, because it is a fire tube the word stands for fire so uh, we used to create some kind of fire in a tube so that is what it is fire tube so there is a lot of coal stack and the, through these coal stacks when you add just to burn this coal so we will get generate a flue gas that passes through a tube and this tube is integrated with a cell uh, with that uh, circulates the, in which water comes in and water goes out uh, so through this process water enters and we get the steam out and exhaust of the flue gas goes out through a chimney now here main uh, important concern is about that uh, we are not able to effectively utilize this fuel properly because there are many ways we cannot uh, control them and second thing uh, here uh, we can it, i mean the main limitation for this boiler it is uh, it can produce the steam only up, only up to 18 bar and with an efficiency of 70 percent so basically uh, people started thinking of the uh, subsequent uh, innovations uh, against this fire tube boilers a new designs come up so that new design uh, come up means instead of using the coal directly the concept of fluid light bed boiler comes into pictures so those fluid light bed boiler schematically is shown here so instead of directly using the coal um, coal you try to make it uh, the fuel in the powder form and try to uh, use them properly so basically from the plenum chamber you introduce the coal in a pulverized form and uh, into the combustion chamber and in this combustion chamber there are submerged water tubes and uh, they get heat from these uh, things so uh, that means one side we get coal other and air mixture that comes in and uh, this gets heated and subsequently the water goes out and uh, the exhaust product that means whatever left out uh, the which is called as a flue gas enters through the cyclone uh, separator so this is how it uh, operates but it uh, through this process uh, what has uh, is observed is that the uh, as compared to the conventional ones the volumetric re heat release increases about 10 to 15 times 
So, that way we can say uh, heat transfer rates, uh, surface heat transfer rates also becomes higher from the conventional boiler. The next category of uh, uh, tube and which is mainly uh, what we are talking about the steam generator, they fall under the category of water tube boilers and uh, in fact, this water tube boilers uh, or other way we call it as a steam generator, they are eventually same, but uh, what we see is that these uh, they have the components, different components like integration of uh, economizers, boiler, superheater, reheater and air preheater. So, all these things are integrated in a sequence manner, so that a single entity and that you normally call as a steam generator supplies the necessary quantity. So, water from high pressure feed water heater which is about 230 to 260 degree centigrade that is uh, is received by an economizer and leaves saturated or two phase at low quality then it enters the stream drum at a midpoint. So, more close look of this we can see here is that uh, in the same figure what we see uh, that uh, when the water enters uh, into the stream drum when the uh, from the economizer component and when it enters it is the basically collection or or we can say reservoir for water and to get saturated steam one way is that we have to keep uh, the water take out of the water from the drum through the down comer and header is the uh, meeting point between the heat source and uh, this incoming water through the down comer. When heat is being received the steam gets generated. It uh, since its density is low, it rises through an uh, riser and once we riser, we get a superheated steam here Then subsequently uh, saturated steam at this exit of the stream drum and they are subsequently used for uh, the superheater. So, essentially we are coming from this path okay? and if there are some reheating is required, then we have a reheater unit. Reheating unit that means once you have reached superheated steam and then first expansion takes place in the turbine then you are reheating from 2 to 3. So, that reheating uh, things comes from the reheating uh, reheater and again it is also part of the complete component of steam uh, generator. Then uh, through this process uh, okay, to and to operate the steam we also require uh, force draft fans. So, force draft fans uh, that is mainly required to uh, uh, because we require very high steam rate. So, for that reasons uh, for that reasons and mixing has to take place and we also expect a uh, temperature of close to 1650 degree centigrade. So, that is the reason we also require force draft fans. And the, again the combusted gas they have to leave. So, once the combustion process is over that exhaust from the steam has to leave from the stack through the fuel stack and that leave leaving takes place through the 3 uh, at around 320 degree centigrade. So, that is the, the region we also require the induced uh, draft fans that draws away that means unwanted flue gases has to be drawn away from the systems and then, uh, then, uh, then they have to get it outside of the stack and moreover it has to go to the higher atmosphere or higher altitude. So, that at a relatively higher height. So, that is the require that is the reason we require an induced draft fan and of course, another uh, category is that when uh, we take this uh, the water that comes out from the uh, uh, water exit temperature is of the flue gas is about 150 degree centigrade and uh, this is also required that is because there are many reasons that we, why we require exit temperature more than 100 degree centigrade just to make sure that we are exiting only the steam I mean the there is no component of water that remains in the entire unit uh, because it corrodes this surface due to condensation. Second thing is that when you go for higher temperatures the flue gas has enough uh, density becomes lower so that they can go relatively to a um, larger height through this high flume. So, this makes 
through complete dispersion in the atmosphere. So, these are some constraints that uh, we require that needs to be attended while designing these water tube boilers. Then next segment that we are going to talk about uh, one particular component of this water uh, steam generator that is steam drum. So, once you have this we uh, when you talk about steam drum we say that it gives only saturated steam, but how does it happen? So, uh, why uh, we why I mean what are the different other complications that um, uh, arises here. So, if you look at closely only for the steam drum uh, this is a particular figure which says that the drum essentially contains water flour and the saturated steam uh, which is a mixture of this. We expect that uh, the only saturated steam goes out as a steam inlet and we also expect that only water goes through the down comers and the after receiving the heat, uh, heat from the fuel air the steam has to rise and when it rises, it also submerges in this water and finally, it goes as a saturated steam. So, this this so that means that we need to separate the saturated steam with, with respect to uh, water. So, this is the first uh, task that uh, the, the steam drum does. Uh, and typically, the size of uh, the steam drum is about uh, length is there in the cylindrical configurations of a length of 30 meters and diameter of 5 meters and uh, a typical power plant uh, must have at least um, 30 outlets, nozzles and many more downcomers and risers. And while taking uh, the entry for uh, water into uh, the steam drum comes from the economizer unit that means, from the enter entry comes from the economizer unit. So, economizer is located somewhere here. Then there are possible ways that one of the uh, important uh, work that steam drum has to do is to separate the steam from the water. So, there are three classical mechanisms one is gravity separation, uh, second one is mechanical separation, third one is centrifugal separation. So, first category is, is most conveniently used that is the gravity separation that means, uh, it is basically density difference of steam and water. So, the gravity separation uh, taking the advantage of gravity separations uh, what we can see is that uh, when the water velocity is low then you can use them use this concept more easily. Because uh, the water velocities are low and uh, naturally the and uh, um, the without any interference of uh, water droplets we can separate the steam and um, water. So, it is more economical uh, for low qual steam quality and low pressure requirement. Now, when you go for relatively higher pressures, so we expect uh, that uh, we expect that uh, the formation of water bubbles because uh, and that has to be and that uh, formation of water bubbles limits the, uh, the steam production rate. Uh, at the outlet. That means, there may be possibility of since water bubbles uh, also creates the choking of the steam outlet. So, for that reasons that up water bubbles has been separated. So, that is what uh, the, the mechanical arrangements like uh, baffles, screens are made. So, that that separates it out and that is relatively at higher pressures. Now, for very high pressures nearing to critical pressures that means, when we are mainly particularly when you are using one through boiler, we expect that the steam production has to be continuous and at higher rate because we are operating at very high pressures and to do that we have to um, forcibly allow this water saturated steam uh, to get out of the steam drum. So, for that we have the centrifugal separators um, devices. And there are incorporated, and finally, also screams, uh, screens are also used in the drum exit for the final drying operation uh, action. So, this is all about uh, how, how the steam drum operates, uh, uh, different mechanisms. Now, we will again talk about very specific components like in the steam drum, we have used the word riser and downcomers. Downcomer is for water to come out from the steam drum, riser is for uh, steam that 
goes up into the stream drum. So, if you take one particular segment, uh, it is represented in this figure. So, we have a stream drum, uh, the down comer, the water comes in and this height of this uh, thing uh, is what we call as h and this through this uh, down comer and subsequently water uh, gets heat from the fossil fuel and again it rises and enters into the stream jumps. So, this process we call this as an actual circulation process. Now, we need to understand in a conventional natural cell circulation processes, what is the mechanism means how this density uh, uh, variations will help us in circulating water. So, mostly this is a very well standard concept that is used in the power plants. We will not cover about this uh, only the, because this is a gravity um, circulations. Other two components will not, uh, not the cover in this um, section. So, uh, like centrifugal uh, separators or centrifugal devices or mechanical um, devices, baffles, screens, we will not cover to them in a deep manner. So, we will only talk about the natural circulation of water in a stream drum through the riser and downcomer arrangement. So, essentially the density difference is the driving force. We will try to find out what is the pressure uh, requirement or what is pumping power requirement that essentially depends on the pressure rise through this riser. To calculate this, uh, what we have uh, considered is that their possible ways of water circulations uh, normally is favored for subcritical range of 160 bar and when the critical pressure is above 221 bar, then density becomes uh, density drops drastically. So, that means at critical point, if you look at the critical point of uh, water, then at the critical point, the, the difference in the density of water or steam is almost nil, negligible. So, that is the reason, that is the uh, things that the at very high pressure, the difference between the steam and water densities decreases rapidly. So, this is an, uh, uh, this is an although, although this is a very advantage part, also there is also uh, disadvantage part that uh, natural circulation may not be a feasible option when you go for very high pressure operations. But however, let us see, assume that we are going for a natural circulation based water circulation through natural uh, or buoyancy dependent water circulation. So, for that reason the critical parameter that we see out of this is that here uh, when you say when you water comes through a down comer it is its thermodynamic state is pure liquid and when it enters to the riser it is state in the, uh, the heat gets added into this water and it becomes steam. So, essentially when the slug of mass is moving through rises not all of the uh, ga, uh, all, all the quantities of water get um, become steam immediately. So, bas basically uh, if whatever portion is there in the uh, riser slug of uh, mass is in the riser it is a mixture of water and uh, steam. Uh, so, that is a two phase systems. So, when it is a two phase system so obviously, there is a density difference. Now, we need to find out what is the average de steam density of the mixtures. Now, to find this average uh, steam density of the mixtures, we introduced uh, the term which is called as a void fraction, another term which is alpha. Uh, then uh, we also talk about average density of the steam uh, mixture in the riser, riser part is this and also average mixture density distributions that is based on the uh, amount of density with respect to uh, liquid phase and density with respect to gas phase and alpha separates out between these two, whereas alpha is nothing but the void fractions. So, a mathematical way of representation, I mean I am not going to into deep, deep into detail. First thing is that driving pressure you need to calculate through the density difference in the down comber. So, in the down comber uh, what is the density and average density of this uh, in the riser. So, that density difference into multiply by height is your uh, power requirement. Now, to find this average density of uh, water vapor mixture in the risers, this uh, this equation we are going to use 
and this is nothing but the integration of mean average density over the entire height of the riser. So, that can be found out average density. A most uh, standard way of expressions which you can directly take it from the books, uh, it was uh, like uh, we can take the average, I mean it is well established expressions, what is what we call as uh, rho uh, r bar, which is nothing but average density of steam water mixer in the riser. You can use this particular expressions um, and it was a, a empirical or we can say it is a derived expressions which is mostly used in the steam power plant. So, using this we can find out this and finally, ultimately we can get the uh, what is the driving pressure that is caused by the natural circulations. Of course, uh, here uh, to uh, there are uh, other parameters that is involved. I mentioned one thing is the void fractions, which is defined as the ratio of volume of the vapor to the volume of steam uh, water mixtures. Dryness factor is also important, which is uh, referred as the mass of uh, dry vapor of the steam to the combined mass of the steam and uh, liquid in the mixture. Now, for a two phase systems, uh, we also define a parameter which is called as a slip ratio. Since it is a two phase systems, we say that uh, may be vapor moves at a faster rate. So, how much faster that typical value uh, depends on the uh, length path of the riser that is h and which is mainly in the range of uh, 1 to 2, but uh, we cannot go beyond 10. Uh, so, 1 to 2 is a reasonable number for water circulation in the boiler. Okay. Next uh, part I have already mentioned several times that uh, once through boiler. So, once through boiler take, takes care about uh, the um, operating the steam boiler at a crit at a conditions which is above the critical pressure uh, 22 mega Pascals. So, through that while operating at this pressure we it is possible to bring water to steam directly bypassing its critical point. So, basically if you make a comparison of advantage of once through boiler and uh, the conventional drum type boiler, this is shown in the figure. If you see the drum type steam generator, they have component like superheater, economizer uh, or um, uh, riser, downcomer. So, all these components are integral part of this, but when you see once through boiler uh, from the economizer to superheater, it steam goes uh, water goes directly to steam. So, essentially uh, that means, uh, we have to op and for this to operate, we have to go for uh, the, uh, the pressure which is above than 22 mega Pascal for water. Although it is very lucrative options, uh, lucrative options has many meaning that means, we are actually bypassing many important components like a ground comer, riser, um, avoiding the avoiding the, um, the heating part uh, of liquid to vapor that is transition state. So, all these things when we are bypassing, so this, is be this becomes an added advantage. But what are another significant way in terms of economics is that if you look at the steam uh, production like uh, throttled steam pressure uh, and change in the heat rate. So, if you look at this part then interestingly we can observe most important uh, concept that uh, the we can uh, basically heat rate if you say that it is defined as the amount of energy which is added to by heat transfer to a cycle to produce one unit of work output. Now, this heat rate comes down. So, if you see from this particular figure, one side we have throttle steam pressure which is the requirement and heat rate comes down. That means, if you are increasing, uh, increasing uh, the throttle steam uh, pressure and heat rate comes down. That means, the rate of heat addition in a one through boiler as compared to conventional uh, boiler is heat rate is less. So, when the heat rate is less that means, we are actually using with low quantity of uh, fossil fuels we can produce at higher steam. So, that is the advantage that uh, ec economically once through boilers is chosen for many studies many applications. 
Of course, for that uh, when you talk about this one through boiler, we must have operating, uh, operating range of 130 to 276 bar and its flow rate and it has a flexibility of choosing the steam flow from very low to very high from 4 to 1250 kg per second. So, that is the unanimous choice that uh, once through boiler has many more advantages than the conventional water based boiler. And of course, once through boiler is most unanimous choice when you mainly goes for nuclear or, uh, or any geothermal power plant systems because of its uh, uniqueness that means we can directly go from water to steam by bypassing the critical point. So, this is all about the overall steam generator and its applications and before you end this lecture let us solve some numerical uh, problems based on our discussion so far. So, the problem statement goes like this we have a steam generator it burns a fuel oil with 20 percent excess air. The flue gas pressures leaving the air preheater is 3.1 bar and we need to find out what is the minimum stack requirement to avoid the condensations. So, first thing is that let us understand that where is this air preheater is located. So, air preheater is somewhere here and this air preheater is used to take heat from the flue gas which is relatively goes out these things and this flue gas is uh, going as uh, 3.1 bar. Now, when this when you call this 3.1 bar flue uh, uh, gas is going out the flue gas components is essentially the products of combustion. So, main important requirement is that uh, we, may, we must keep this stack temperature to a point or to, to a value for which there will not be any condensations. And the, why the condensation? Because the product of con, con combustion mainly com, uh, consists of water component H2O. Now, let us see how you go about it. So, first thing um, is that let us see that what is your the fuel. So, fuel in this case is the fuel oil. So, fuel oil which is typically a fossil fuel. So, fossil fuel and if you a chemical formula if you can just assume it is a kind of C 12 H 26. So, this is the fuel oil and you take this chemical composition as C 12 H 26. So, for this the takes with air and it gives flue gas and this flue gas mainly contains water. So, we need to find out and this flue gas is leaving at 3.1 bar. And we need to find out that at this pressure uh, the water vapor uh, water should not condensate. So, you for this corresponding but then to do that for condensation of water we also need to find out what is the partial pressure of this water vapors. To solve these problems first thing that you need to understand you have to find out stoichiometric combustion equation. which says that any uh, car hydrocarbon C x H y when it mixes with air, air means its contents oxygen plus 3.72 times nitrogen. So, basically mixture of uh, a, a nitrogen and uh, oxygen with suppose if you take 1 mole of oxygen there has to be 3.72 moles of nitrogen. And when this combustion takes place it gives x times CO2 a balanced chemical equation will look like this y by 2 H2O plus 3.76 A N2. 
Now, here a is equal to x plus y by 4 and x and y is nothing but the uh, carbon and hydrogen. Now, if you take this uh, if you in our case we have x is equal to 12, y is equal to 26. So, this will imply a is equal to 18.5. Now, when you put all of them the combustion equation will look like C 12 H 26 plus 18.5 O 2 plus 69.56 N 2 gives rise to 12 C O 2 plus 13 H 2 O plus 69.56 N 2, but this is the stoichiometric combinations, but what happens it actually burns with 20 percent excess air that means this number has to be increased by 20 percent. Now, when we increase by 20 percent then new equation will come back that means, uh, 20 percent excess air. So, our combustion equation will be C 12 plus C 12 H 26 plus 22.2 O 2. So, this also will be increased by 20 percent. So, this becomes 83.473 N 2. So, this gives 20, uh, 12 CO 2 remains as it is, H 2 O also will remain as it is. What will be there? Another 20 percent increase that is 3.7 times O 2 will be there. So, 20 percent of 18 3.7 we come because 18.5 multiplied by 0 0.2 is nothing but your 3.7 O 2 and then we will also have N 2. So, this will be 83.4723 N 2. So, this is the combination of this. Now, once this is your balance equations, then we will be finding out what is the mole fraction. of water. So, if I say this is y H 2 O that is mole fraction of water is nothing but 13 which is the number of moles of water total uh, mole will be 12 plus 13 plus 3.7 plus 83.472. So, once you have mole fraction of water so this number is 0 0.116. So, mole fraction of water why do we require calculate because correspondingly we need to find out partial pressure. Of H 2 O. So, that is nothing but P H 2 O will be uh, Y H 2 O multiplied by P total. Now, P total pressure you have given 3.81 uh, bar. So, this number will be 0 0.116 into uh, 3.1. So, that means P H 2 O is 0 0.3596 bar. So, that means, uh, we need to have uh, the saturation pressure at uh, will be 3.96 bar, but our question is is asking for temperatures. So, we refer steam table that involves for saturated water pressures. So, this will give you uh, means we have to use saturated pressure table. So, this will give you T H 2 O corresponding to this saturation pressure is ab approximately 72 degree centigrade. So, this is your answer we say that we have to minimum temperature of the stack temperature should be 
72 degree centigrade to our condensation. And essentially this is the requirement that uh, condensation should not happen because it will have a corrosion effect. So, the next important problem that we will talk about is about uh, the natural circulation in the uh, water tube boiler. So, I have mentioned several times that we are going for the calculate the driving pressure delta P d which is the density difference between the down comer and riser and riser consists of combination of steam and water. So, we need to find out the average uh, density distributions through this expressions and in this expressions the terms like we are using xi uh, alpha which is the void fractions xi is the another fixed term I will explain um, um, that is the ratio of specific volumes. So, uh, to solve these problems let us and also we know this exit quality. So, for the solutions is a very simple with a view point that we must understand ki what are these uh, the notations that we have to calculate individually. So, first thing is height is h which is given as 12 meter that is riser height x z that means exit quality of the steam at this point is 50 percent that is 0 0.5 and it operates at 170 bar so 172 bar. So, P is equal to 172 bar. Now, here when it is operating, it is operating in liquid plus vapor mixture. So, from the steam table, you refer saturated vapor conditions. So, this will give you two important parameters at this pressure at 172 bar. We can find out what is V f is 0 0.00177 meter cube per kg and V g is equal to 0 0.00836 meter cube per kg and here the equation required density we find rho f that is inverse of V f and this is 565 kg per meter cube and rho g is equal to uh, 119.6 kg per meter cube. Then first term we have to find out what is void fraction void fraction which is alpha e. Uh, you recall our expression that is 1 by 1 plus 1 minus x by x c. x c is your ex exit quality of the steam into xi and what is xi? xi is nothing but v f by v g into S. S is nothing but your sleep ratio. I mentioned since the uh, steam in this riser, it is a mixture of liquid vapor mixtures. So, vapor travels at a faster rates. So, that means we say that for this sleep ratio is about 1.2 times higher. So, this for this, uh, this factor j is represented here. Now, we took taking this as 1.2 and we know v f and v g. So, j number is 0 0.254 and when you when you have j is 0 0.254 x c is 0 0.5. So, this will give alpha e when you insert this value we get alpha e is equal to 0 0.8. Now, when you have all this number then we can find out what is rho r bar that is average density of steam water mixer in the risers. So, you have rho f rho g already known here, xi already we have calculated, then uh, alpha e uh, the void fractions already calculated and putting this inserting this value in this conventional expressions, 
we find what is rho e bar is 331 kg per meter cube. Now, once you know this rho bar, then we can calculate delta p d for the down cumber. It is nothing but rho down cumber minus rho r bar. So, down cumber density is mainly liquid that is 565. So, this number can be assumed as this 565. So, delta p d can be calculated as 565 minus 331. So, this part is done g is 9.81 meter per second, uh, second square h is the height of the riser that is 12 meter. Now, putting this your delta p d is calculated as 27546 Newton per meter square and delta p d is approximately uh, 0 0.275 bar. So, driving pressure for this system uh, through this natural uh, circulation is about 0.275 bar. So, that means, we need to give some additional device that uh, can create this pressure, so that the steam can rise in the riser. So, this is all about the for the discussion today. Thank you for your attention.